Welcome to Gaming Theme, your channel for everything related to the gaming industry and the financial markets, my friends. So welcome to this new video. In this video, of course, we're going to talk about Square Enix. Square Enix, a publicly traded company in Japan, but you can also actually buy this stock if you're in the US or even if you're in Europe. So very, very simple. But then it's over the counter, guys. So, But in this video, we're going to check this out, all of this a little bit more in detail. So I will make a little chart on analysis very quickly i look a little bit at the games from square enix we're going to get into the into the new year's letter of the president this is also pretty cool and we're going to check out uh, which games are coming in the future and we have a look uh, also for the fundamentals so a lot of a lot of content so this is a no, this is a non-edited video so i'm not editing my videos guys so bear with me if this is the style you you enjoy if not uh, yeah, maybe you should try it, guys. So, all right. Thank you very much for watching. So I would say then, let's look immediately uh, what is Square Enix. Square Enix, where, where where do we stand from the stock point of view? So this is maybe interesting. So, and before you forget, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a retail investor and a YouTuber, and I'm not invested in Square Enix. Of course, make your own research. So this is the Square Enix holding. So on Yahoo Finance, we find uh, here now, uh, this, this is the Japanese one. And then you can also, if you are interested to, to buy it over the counter, you, you, you need to use this ticker and then you can buy it in the US over the counter for 47.65 uh, dollars so at what what do we see immediately look let's let's see we have an earnings per share of two dollars 48 we have a PE ratio of of 19.21 so this is pretty good and we have a market cap of uh, oh, 5.69 billion US dollars this here is the five year chart and if we put it uh, to to a 10 uh, to a max chart then we see well they were growing a little bit over the time but not so much but this is maybe more really Related to to also a little bit to the Japanese uh, index to the Nikkei we can also look at the chart so yeah growing not too much so I can even see a little bit value in this a PE ratio under 20 it starts to definitely already having a, a bit value aspects then we have uh, 5550 uh, full-time employees this is also uh, yeah i would say that's it's 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 not a small company and uh, what is square enix doing overall yeah you know they make video games of course but they have also amusement facilities with some arcade machines because square enix uh, they have two brands they have the square enix brand and they have the and they have the Taito brand. Maybe we see something of Taito here, uh, not directly. So the Taito brand. So you you might know Taito maybe from those from those uh, bubble bubble uh, Buster Move uh, uh, arcade machines uh, in your bar next door. <laughs> maybe you heard about this. So they were founded 1975, headquartered of course in Tokyo, and uh, mostly it's about video games, guys. So let's have a look a little bit at the chart. So this is the chart on the Japanese stock exchange. Uh, we, we saw it now already on uh, Yahoo Finance, but I think the trading view chart is always uh, much better. So also here, like like the Nasdaq a little bit. It's it's a bit like the Nasdaq. If you if you look here like the Nasdaq and you go back, uh, then you could also oh my god, Nasdaq looks it looks really crazy. So 2013, 12, uh, this is uh, there 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 it started to really really go up crazy and then oh crazy I don't want to use this word sorry, uh, but going up. A lot and then uh, we all talked about oh yeah that's the end and then uh, what did we see we saw of course the pandemic happening yeah the Japanese chart has to be put in relation a little bit here to the Nikkei when we look here at the Nikkei chart we can uh, see yeah it's, it's not a total outperformer chart the Nikkei chart so maybe all is a bit too much but uh, no, why not Let, let's go off so let's go all on the nikkei charts also in 2012 it started Nick, the nikkei started to to come back from 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 a really yeah from a lot of uh, depression back uh, in 
yeah, 2014 and you see also then in the chart in Square Enix this uh, happened then as well that they were actually profiting from the overall market situation in Japan. Therefore always keep in mind if you buy a stock guys of course be, not only be diversified but if you buy a stock like Square Enix then you have to keep in mind that you buy now in the Japanese markets and then you want to know if the, how the Japanese markets actually performs and you're not just buying now a Square Enix and you think like it's going to perform like an American stock so for example if you buy a Chinese stocks look at the Chinese market so the Chinese stocks most probably will not perform like the American stock even if the if, if the business uh, is the same so this is very important so therefore overall but this is going too, too far now in this video if you want to invest in, uh, in like Square Enix, Capcom etc look a little bit what the outlook for, for the Nikkei uh, uh, is and uh, look a little bit uh, the economic outlook for Japan of course but overall I would say it's not a particular bad chart I mean we drop now down maybe here's some support when you when you say when you when you look at this in a very uh, uh, simplistic way otherwise you could also draw here some sort of a trend line but we broke also through this so so this chart is extremely difficult to read for me personally so let's come back to the, the to Yahoo Finance where we get some some information about the numbers. So we see here uh, that's a, a bit in uh, second quarter 21, a bit in uh, third quarter 21. That's nice. And on the first of February, so in uh, around about two two weeks, uh, we're going to see if there's again a bid for the fourth quarter. So this is all important. So then we have a revenue of 332 billion. I think that's now the yen, of course. Yeah, of course. And then we have the earnings of 26, 27 billion. So at least, I mean, it's always positive. It's not really a growth stock in this sense. It's, uh, as I said already, a little bit a uh, value stock or a value gaming stock and then uh, if you look for example at the recommendation of the analyst yeah well overall a 2.2 buy rating is not the worst that's okay i mean uh, everything on the hold may maybe everything under 2.5 is, is interesting everything uh, over 2.5 starts to where you have to really question yourself if if it makes sense to make uh, for yourself this investment always depends of course on your strategy and your time horizon i think we also have a dividend yeah 1.14 percent that's nice to see a dividend why not i mean uh, you invest in a company and you also want to get paid by the company for being invested in the company so average 7273 is the average price target if we if we go back to the chart uh what, what did we say one second 7270 so then uh, the average price target uh, would be here more or less so we were already there and then you see actually we were we were, we were having a big drop actually from we had a big drop from the september heights uh like like all the other gaming stocks of course they were falling as square enix was falling like the other gaming stocks uh, a nice drop so hmm. if they really would drop to this would be uh, to uh, january 2019 well then maybe i would be interested to buy so yeah my opinion was my opinion now what will i do i don't see for myself at the moment an investment uh, for square enix but as i said make your own research guys maybe square enix is an investment for you maybe it is for you but i think it's a very very interesting very very interesting and i like and i like the philosophy from them uh, in the sense of that they really want to create more value for shareholders but of course they get also <laughs> they get also a bit attacked and we will see this immediately so list of square enix video games look at this list guy i mean that's a beautiful list that's a beautiful list of so many games that they are, have already published so of course games are final fantasy uh, dragon squares kingdom hearts uh final fantasy 14 uh, online for example that's interesting but also games like uh, i see mostly final fantasy kingdom hearts games here so they that's those are the games are uh, monster now uh, monster hunter no that's capcom sorry for this 
So we see a lot of Final Fantasy and sometimes, yeah, for example, Trials of Mana, but this, this is what I all count like those JRPGs. So they're the master of the JRPG games. But some interesting new games come out like Babylon's Fall, Triangle Strategy, Stranger of Paradise, that's again a Final Fantasy title, and then Forspoken, upcoming action role-playing video game developed by Luminous, production published by Square Enix and uh, yeah the 24th of may and this for example this game costs at the moment on steam 70 euros so square enix wants to want to uh, elevate the prices uh, that gamers would have to pay uh, for their game so this is definitely not something the game gaming community likes but maybe the shareholder thinks it could be interesting want a new star ocean that's very interesting so star ocean is definitely a classic and then of course we have to look forward to final fantasy 16 and i like that they bring those games uh, for the playstation 5 as well as for as well as for um for the pc for microsoft pc so from this point of view that's very very really good so left alive this was for example a huge uh, disappointment the quiet man was a huge disappointment so the the problem is they with all those games they have sometimes games that completely let's say uh, completely miss the point so near automata is also by them and then the, the life is stranger series is also from the moon hunter so so we see they're kind of diverse they have a lot of interesting uh, games of course so and then square enix has a title corporation which continues to publish its own video games since september 2005 and acquired game publisher idos interactive so those are our, our uh, tomb raider they create tomb raider ah, yeah the all the Tomb Raider games, of course, we shouldn't forget. They are, they are really, really good games. So I'll, I enjoy the Tomb Raider games a lot. And here we see, see again the list. But for example, the Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy was very popular. Life is Strange is very popular. Tomb Raider is very popular. Sleeping Dogs, I think, was also kind of popular. So everyone knows those games. The Outriders was not so popular. Everyone knows those games, guys. So therefore... <laughs> Call of Duty Ghost was, I think, only in Japan, published by uh, Square Enix, since this is obviously a game by Activision Blizzard, guys. So, all right, so this is, uh, I would say, all over uh, a good overview, and I have some very interesting information for you of the when we go now on the page of the Square Enix. This is the this is the the the, the, the page for let's say for the company itself for investors. And I think this is pretty, pretty well done, pretty well, well made. So you get all your information very quickly. So you don't have to go and click uh, on some, some links that are super hidden. So very clearly made. So that's cool. So valuable portfolio of property, Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, Tomb Raider, and the legendary Space Invaders, guys. That's This is impressive, Space Invaders. I didn't know that. You see, now I learned something. So. This is a very interesting letter, a letter from the president, a letter from the president uh, of, of Square Enix. And I, I always like this. I mean, since uh, Berkshire Hathaway or Warren Buffett better said, uh, we all like this when the president is sitting down, is writing a letter to shareholders, to the company uh, where he sees uh, that we are going. So, and you can see already here this term NFT and blockchain. NFT and blockchain, guys. So and AI research and development. So a lot of interesting stuff going on. So if you want me to read the whole letter for you in the video, I can do this. I really can do this. I feel like this is going to be a lot of fun. Or oh, I'm just using a voice to text, a text to voice uh, 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 add on for, for this letter, but I can do this as well. So there you see then here the news from uh, from Vlad Savov. Square Enix searches on Metaverse embrace embrace despite gamer backlash. So here's an interesting article by Bloomberg, and uh, yeah, let's see what what is still written. So there's more or less written. Square Enix president Yusuke Matsuda issued an interest, enthusiastic endorsement of novel technologies such as blockchain gaming, non-fungible tokens and the metaverse over the weekend triggering an 8% jump in the game maker's shares as well as a backlash from very gamers on social media. So where's the jump? Where do we see that? Some, probably this was the jump then. 
and the 11th of January, probably this was the jump. Yeah, well, we saw, of course, that the Nasdaq also was selling in the last, uh, in the last, let's say, in the last two weeks, guys. So very important. So markets are not all in a bubble. They all perform very similar. And uh, yeah, Matsuda touched on full range of nascent technologies, including artificial intelligence and the proliferation of 5G wireless connectivity. But it was his comments about using blockchain tokens to entice players that drew the most attention. He also said Square Enix would consider issuing its own token in the future, its own blockchain token in the future. Oh my God, I can see already the angriness of, of, of gamers. So here we see. So I realized that some people who play to have fun and who currently form the majority of players have voiced their reservation toward these new trends. So, so he understands that a lot of gamers actually don't want to see blockchain or NFTs in games. But, 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 and now comes the however. Now comes the however, guys. So, however, I believe that there will be a certain number of people whose motivation is to play to contribute, play to contribute, to play to contribute to the game, to play to make money, because this means that this this is also meant with this. So, play to contribute, by which I mean to help make the games more exciting. So, yeah, it's not really clear what he says. So. Is it more exciting if you can earn money? Probably it's the more exciting. So, traditional gaming has offered no explicit incentive to this latter group of people. So this is actually a very important aspect. So, so he's saying traditional games are just gaming, are just gaming. You play, you consume, it's entertainment, and you stop playing, and it's all done. So, but this is also not. The, he's not the first one. I think another CEO from a gaming company said this as well. So, but in the future, they they think like games should actually allow you to earn some money with items or even if you play and you you uh, you create something in the game you create some product in the game and then you sell it for example in a in a in a in a, in a in a multiplayer online uh, rpg game you play uh, you 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 for example you the uh, you, you cre create an item that's uh, from a resource you get that resource you create your item and then you sell for example a product and then you get actually real life money so or you get some token and you use some square enix token and then you can sell this square enix talk token you can sell them uh, for for us dollar so and then and like this actually someone playing video games can't make money i mean we're always coming back to the same argument gaming has to become in the future a way how a gamer can make money otherwise it's for for the whole economy it's totally useless then it's just entertainment so so you go have your real life job and then you go uh, and then you buy yourself a, 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 an, an rpg a role-playing game you play this for 50 hours and then uh, then it's fine but how am amazing would it be if you actually could uh, produce something in those 50 hours not only consume something that you produce and something you can sell and then even in those 50 hours the investment of your 50 hours would give you a rendement would give you would pay for you so it's it, i know i know that's very controversial and i know a lot of gamers don't like this guys don't like this guys and it's also not coming immediately i can promise you this definitely not immediately so so square enix embraces nfts and in-game blockchain token economies to incentivize players to create more content will enable self-sustaining game growth and this is what they think then they think actually the games will uh, will grow like this so the, the it's 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 like it's like it's like those uh, blockchain games it's like uh, gaming for money it's it, it means they are delivering the platform with an exciting game like a final fantasy 14 and in final fantasy 14 you create you crew or you are part of the economy in final fantasy 14 and you can really earn money where you can buy your your your, your ramen noodles uh, uh, your food uh, in, in real life so i like the idea guys i like the idea and i love I, I i know that a lot of you don't like it so, but that's the whole point so we are here to discuss all right so chart we checked numbers we checked gaming list we checked guys 
and the new year's letter from the president we checked as well and with that i would say i'm leaving it here i hope you enjoyed this video it was a longer video but i think there are so many interesting aspects uh, that are important for the future of gaming on the one hand and on the other hand also for potential shareholders this might be also very very interesting so thank you very much for watching see you the next time also guys check out my other videos on my gaming thing gaming industry and finance channel this is a new channel i'm growing it slowly i'm not going to make a lot of marketing or i don't make any marketing campaigns i'm just letting it grow i make my videos i bring out my content and who likes watching it joins me and i don't have to push people uh, to 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 watch this so i'm not going to make uh, spend uh, hundred thousands of uh, dollars to 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 make a marketing for this so it's an easy channel so i like the subject i like to talk about the subject that's for me the most important so you you're going to you hear in my videos that i enjoy the subject i think that's the most important part of this also as a gamer and as a retail investor so way too long video guys thank you much see you the next time bye bye